recording service. So for those of you who are worshiping online, my name is Pastor Esther Rosario, and I welcome you on behalf of Woodmark United Methodist Church in the name of our risen Lord. I gotta get myself together here. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. So we have a few um, housekeeping items to take care of as we get acclimated to worshiping together again. Um, we are striving to do no harm and to keep everyone safe as we come together. So we ask and we thank you for your patience and your cheerful cooperation. <laughs> um, so today we're celebrating Holy Communion and the elements are in the narthex on the table, bread and also little cups of juice. So if you did not pick that up on your way in, please raise your hand and an usher will bring those, those elements to you. Everybody got it? Great, and for those of you worshiping online at home, I invite you to hit pause and go to your kitchen and collect some bread, crackers, juice, um, so that we can celebrate Holy Communion together later in the service. Um, please keep your masks on. I am taking my mask off because I am far away from people and I think it will be hard for you to understand me through this, but I can put it on if that is more comfortable for all of you. No, okay, all right. Um, at the end of worship, the ushers will um, be dismissing you by row, starting with the back row. Now, if you ordered flowers, please just tell, tell the usher, hey, I got flowers, and just come on up and get flowers. It's okay, please do. Um, also, we will not be passing an offering plate, uh, but there are offering plates sitting on a table in the narthex for you to drop your tithes and offerings in. And for those of you worshiping online, if you'd like to give electronically, you may go to our website at www.woodmarkumc.org or you may send a check in the mail. And we thank you for continuing to support our current expenses, our mortgage fund, the trustees property maintenance fund, the monthly mission, and our Ford and Faith Capital campaign. Now our monthly mission this month is Heifer International, which is a beautiful ministry. The monies that we donate um, go to buy purchasing animals for families who then use that animal or animals as income and also for food. And then they also pass along the animals to other families. So it is a gift that does truly keep on giving. So please give generously as the Lord asks you to give. And one more announcement. We are excited to share that we will be having a kids' closet in um, clothing and toy giveaway on uh, Saturday, March, no, April 17th. I wrote March in here. It's not, it's April 17th. Sorry about that. From 9 to 11, and setup will be on Friday the 16th of April, beginning at 9 a.m. Fran Vukovic um, is uh, organizing that. And we need lots of help. We have lots and lots of stuff because we haven't had a kid's closet in a long time. So if you can come and help out on Friday for any amount of time or on Saturday for the giveaway, that would be awesome. Just get a hold of Fran and let her know that you'll be here. All right. Please rise as you are able for the call to worship. Where, O oh death, is your victory. Where, Where O oh death, is your sting? Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia.
Please join me in the invocation. O oh God of all our days, we come this morning with eager anticipation. We seek to know you, to see you, to touch you. Open our hearts that we might experience you anew. Open our lives that we may be faithful witnesses to your resurrection. May we, with shouts of joy, proclaim your steadfast, liberating love to all people, everywhere, through the power of our risen Lord. Amen. You may be seated. And the children, and the children, and the children may come forward. Uh, put together 
a virtual video of the United Methodist Christians from around the globe to sing Thine Be the Glory. So please enjoy this. Go in. 
Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, excuse me, also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but I go to my brother, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Christ is risen. He is risen in me. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Psalm 11824. This indeed is the day that the Lord has made, and we are here to celebrate that our Lord has risen, both in this space. Do you remember last year we didn't get to celebrate together in this space? But we are this year, thanks be to God. And through technology, I'm so thankful for the gift of technology. It's a double blessing. Thanks be to God. Praise be to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Almighty and loving God, we invite your Holy Spirit to be thick in this place with joy. Open our eyes that we might see. Open our minds that we might learn and grow. Open our hearts that we might love all the more like Christ loves. And it's in his precious name that we pray. Amen. We've journeyed this week uh, from Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem to, to the Last Supper on Monday Thursday, Jesus' betrayal, his trial, crucifixion. Can we possibly imagine how terrifying that must have been for Jesus' disciples and his followers? If the authorities could do that to their Lord, what would they do to them who were mere mortals? For many, the crucifixion on Friday meant a Saturday of uncertainty. The in-between the cross and the empty tomb day. The space where dread grows and redemption seems unlikely. But we who live on this side of the resurrection know a better ending because we know a victorious Savior. Our in between the cross and empty tomb day, Holy Saturday, is not filled with the angst of not knowing what's coming next. No, on Holy Saturday, we are getting ready to party on Sunday. We're preparing food for our Easter feast. We're cleaning our homes. And here in our church home, there was cleaning, sanitizing, and decorating with beautiful flowers. And, and I'll mention it again later too, but and Fran made these beautiful, I'm sure, yummy Easter cookies for us. 
Um, usually we share coffee and you know special fellowship treats after worship, but today, as we're trying to be careful, we will get our fellowship treats to go, provided lovingly by Fran Vukovich. We are a people of the resurrection of our Lord. However, as I reflected on Jesus' passion and resurrection this week in preparation for today, what kept coming to mind is how much loss we have suffered over this past year. And a psalm kept coming to my mind that isn't really fitting for Resurrection Sunday, yet I feel compelled by the Holy Spirit to share it. So here goes. is Psalm 13, verses 1 and 2. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? For the disciples, Saturday was a day of uncertainty, waiting, waiting, in the place where darkness seemed to overcome the hope of which Jesus spoke. In this past year, we've all had to some degree an experience of waiting, waiting, in the place where darkness seems to overcome that hope of which Jesus spoke. Maybe that time of waiting began after a loss of a job, the death of a loved one, a diagnosis, a divorce, sickness, fear of the coronavirus, the mask mandate, social distancing, and on and on. You can fill in the blank with your own experience. Darkness may last for a while, but joy comes in the morning. Easter isn't just a celebration. Easter is God revealing himself through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, making all things new. Easter is God exclaiming, I've got you. I've got you while you're grieving. I've got you until you get a new job. I've got you as you go through your treatments. I've got you in your fear. I've got you in your loneliness. The babe born in a lowly manger in Bethlehem was Emmanuel, God with us yesterday, today, and forever. Easter makes the unknowns of today feel less excruciating because of the certain victory of tomorrow. You all walked with our family through our great niece's diagnosis, treatments, and death. As you know, Brooklyn, our sweet Brooklyn, was diagnosed at 10 months of age with acute myeloid leukemia. And a short eight months later, she died from the effects of childhood cancer. And Brookie's mama, our niece Emily, just posted this on Facebook just a few days ago. And I quote, Two years ago, our heads were swimming with worry, fear, anxiety, and exhaustion. A concerned trip to the children's urgent care turned into a midnight ambulance ride to Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. So much has happened in those two years. We battled leukemia. We've gained friendships I never imagined. We gr we've grieved. Our family has grown bigger. Emily just had a baby girl. Our faith has grown stronger. One message of Easter is hope. Hope is not a wish. It is a confident expectation of what will happen. The same hope that was given to the disciples and followers of Jesus is what brings my soul peace. The confident expectation of being with my sweet Brooklyn because of what happened on Good Friday 2,000 years ago. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. End quote. Here's a picture of Brooklyn's first day in the hospital. 
This was before they knew what she had. And then this is a picture of their family. Um, the next um, slide is the upper left is Emily and Dan. And then the bottom left is Colton, the, the oldest son, Brookie's big brother in Brooklyn. But then the upper right is Colton with his new baby sister, Adeline Joan. And then the next, next picture is a picture of Brooklyn's grave decorated for Easter. She loved flamingos, as you can see. This picture is overwhelmingly sad, yet there is hope because the grave is not the end of the story, my friends. And Keith, if you please put it back just to the title now. Thank you. Reverend Don Underwood stated the church does its best work standing in the middle of the cemetery and proclaiming life over death. This year, more than ever, the story of a resurrected Christ has life-giving power. Friends, I hope we can hear this today. The resurrection of Jesus Christ has life-giving power. Through Jesus' resurrection, our lives are, have meaning and purpose in spite of our current circumstances. Through Jesus' resurrection, Jesus' Father became our Father. Jesus' resurrection created bonds between Jesus and his followers, between Jesus and us, a bond that can never be broken. Hear the good news. Nothing that happens to us in this life can separate us from the love of God through his Son, Jesus Christ. Knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Because the tomb was empty, we have been offered new life in Christ. Easter isn't just a celebration. Easter is God revealing himself through the resurrection of Jesus, making all things new. Easter is, ex is God exclaiming, I've got you. I've got you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. The prayer of confession will come up on the screen in just a moment. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please take a moment to wrap up your prayer. Please look up here. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Now this is the time.
time where we normally pass the peace. So this is tricky in this time of social distancing. So I invite you to turn and wave to people. And for people online, if you'd like to hear home alone, please call someone and offer the peace of Christ and maybe invite them to receive Holy Communion with you.
at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of being children of God, let us pray the prayer of our Lord's heart. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. The body of Christ, broken for you, eat and be thankful.
that the ushers will dismiss you by row. So after the benediction, if you'd like to take a seat, that's fine. If you have flowers up here, please just let the ushers know, and you may just come up once you're dismissed and get your flowers to, to go home. Good morning, online friends. Who are you? I am your loved child of God, all and sent to make a difference in the world. Yes, that is who we are. So, beloved children of God, let us go forth in joy, with joy, to share the hope of the risen Lord. And may we live with confidence in knowing that God has given us a holy purpose. And may the blessing of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with us all today and remain with us forever. And all God's children say, 